record the, the meeting. Um, so we'll go for, uh, say, a good 45 minutes or so and uh, try and answer any questions that you have. Um, so let's see what would be the best thing to do. Um, Mm -hmm. So let's see, maybe. Dr. Morden, I have a general question. Okay, go ahead, Sebastian. So when we, um, when we have the exam or when we have our final tomorrow, will, will it be like, a, um, like the same where we have the other exams where we have a PDF um, beforehand or how will it work specifically? So, so you'll be able to see the uh, PDF when you start the exam. Oh, okay. Okay. There, so there'll be a link uh, in the, uh, the when when you click start, then uh, there'll, there'll be some instructions and stuff, and the links in there. Okay. So we will only see the PDF once we actually enter with the exam, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. Yeah, but I I, I was thinking I, I think what I'll do is I'll increase the time uh, to. Uh, uh, I'll give you another 30 minutes. So there's, I think there's currently, I think, I uh, can't remember. Let's see, what is it? Let me look. So I think it is, uh, let's see, well, let me, I'm going to increase it to just a little bit here. Um, so we'll get it, we'll increase it to 150 minutes. And then, um, let's get to the next slide. I think there, um, yeah, we'll change this. And, yeah, I can't change the one thing, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so it'll you'll have 150 minutes. Um, let's see. And let me just see for sure how many. Because I don't, didn't don't actually remember now. I guess there are 80 questions. Yeah, there are 80 questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so there. So. Um, yeah, so let me pull up that, uh, so, and we'll see, um, yeah, so, so, so you will have, uh, two and a half hours. There are 80 questions, um, and then we'll, we'll take a little time now to go over, um, the, uh, yeah, we'll, Put these over here. Okay. Um, and I'll shut that. Okay. So, um, so just a kind of a general overview. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to you know to interrupt or ask. I'll be happy to stop. Um, so. And do this and turn on this. And then let me bring that up just for grins so it's available. Okay, so the the test will generally consist of the following stuff. And I'll, I'll put this over here. Oh, let's see somebody else to come in. Okay. So there'll be a, there'll, there'll be a question where you have a, uh, a truth table and it has some don't cares and you'll have a K-map and you need to, you'll need to, uh, to uh, basically um, ask some questions, answer some questions about the truth table. Of course, the, the, the uh, independent variables uh, are, you know, define the rows and the de dependent variable uh, which we usually call F is the output. And that's the desired output for each row. Each row represents both a min term and a max term. 
when you want to generate a solution, you include all the min terms uh, in SOP form and you include all the max terms in POS forms. The min terms are defined by rows where F equals one, or th those are the desired min terms anyway. Every row has a min term, but, but if F equals zero, you should not include the min term because that would make F equal to one if you include the term. And so that would give you the wrong answer. So you, you want to include all the rows where F equals one, all the min terms from all the rows where F equals one, and all the max terms from all the rows where F equals zero. And you wind up getting the SOP form and the POS form, and they're exactly equal to each other. Uh, and in fact, that represents the SOP to POS trans, you know, conversion. Now, if you just list all the min terms and or them together, because each min term is an AND term, then that gives you a two layer network, but it's not, it's not simplified. Of course, there are some situations where simplification doesn't help you. That would be like when you're implementing it on an FPGA because you're basically filling out lookup tables, which are essentially truth tables. So what you're really doing is you're copying your truth table into a truth table in the FPGA. So no simplification really is useful since the truth table is going to have every row anyway and all the values where F is one and uh, it'll be one and all the values where F is zero, it'll be zero in that lookup table. And so simplifying it doesn't really help. Um, that's also true when you're implementing a, uh, a, a design with a read-only memory. However, if you're implementing it, if you're building, say, an integrated circuit from scratch and you're going to use uh, individual gates on your integrated circuit and build up uh, uh, essentially the equations that represent the solution, then simplification will make uh, a, a real advantage. Uh, if you can simplify it and get it down to a few terms, that'll be that'll take up a lot less space on that integrated circuit uh, than if you uh, had all the you know you know had a whole bunch of min terms. This is especially true when you have a lot of variables. Um, the simplifications might might be very significant. You might have you know twenty variables and and you know Lord knows how many min terms, maybe sixty min terms but you could simplify it down to three or four actual terms. And that would be quite a simplification. So you can see why in some cases you really do want to simplify it. In other cases, you really don't have to. The current chip we use in DSD has, uh, has it's, it's LUT sixes and LUT sevens, uh, actually LUT sevens and a LUT, and you can make even a LUT eight. Uh, so, so you have two LUT sevens per logic slice. So that's a seven variable lookup table. So that's, um, Maybe it's only six. Now I'm confused. But anyway, uh, if it's six, that's that's still 64 rows in your truth table, and that's you know that's six variables. And you can definitely make a LUT seven, which is 100 uh, 128 rows. That's a that's a lot of rows. That's a lot of min terms. And uh, if if you're doing that in a FPGA where you have a LUT seven available, then you're just going to populate all 128 rows with the right values for F. So there's no reason to simplify it. On the other hand, if you're making an integrated circuit and you had say 25 or 30 or 40 midterms, that's a lot of terms. So of course you'd wanna simplify it as much as possible. You might even wanna look at, uh, well, usually your chip is gonna either be, you're either gonna be doing NAN, NAN or NOR, NOR logic. So uh, you would wanna put it in the appropriate form. Uh, so you might not have the option to change uh, the NAN NAN logic may. Uh... So, uh, okay, so John Lawless wanted to know, when does the exam start and stop? So as I said uh, in, in the email I sent out, which, uh, you know, I don't know if everybody got it, but, uh, but if you didn't, uh, you will have from eight o'clock in the morning, you can start the exam and you can start it all the way up to 11.59 at night. Uh, if you start at 11.59, you should still have two and a half hours before it will um, you know, automatically upload. Uh, so, so you basically have all day. I didn't let it, you start in the wee hours of the morning, partly because if somebody started it and then there was a, some kind of problem with the way the thing presented and I'm still sleeping, uh, but I'll be up, you know, I'll be up by 7.30, eight o'clock for sure. And I'll check to see if if there's frantic emails or frantic text messages, you know, alerting me to some major problem, which is always possible. So 
anyway, so that's why I started at eight. But you can go as late as midnight. And by that time, I'll, I'll already know. If there, are, if there are some bad questions, I'll wait till everybody finishes the test and then I will delete the bad questions. Um, if there's a question with the wrong answer, I will finish the test and I will uh, uh, let everybody finish the test and then I'll change the wrong answer to the right. I'll, if, if it's one of the selections, I'll, I'll change it. Like if it's true, false, and the, and the question's really true, uh, then I'll switch it to true instead of false. Uh, and you know it'll all be regraded. If, however, uh, you know it, if you got lucky and guessed the wrong answer, but then it gets changed to the right answer and you lose a point, well, that's just going to be too bad uh, because it was the wrong answer from the get-go. If for some reason the answer is not there, I'll probably just delete the question. Um, so, uh, and whenever I do that, the, the test will be automatically regraded. Um, so, shouldn't should work out. It is currently set up 80 questions, 1.25 points per question. So it works out to be exactly 100. If I delete a question, that's gonna screw the total up. So I'll, I'll have to change the values of the questions probably to 1.3, and then there'll be some, some bonus points probably because of that. So um, anyway, uh, not to worry too much about that, but uh, hopefully, hopefully there, that won't happen. I did go through and check every question. I've read them several times. I'm pretty confident that they're that they're all correct. There aren't too many. There's there's no known errors. Uh, I will say there 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 are two. There's one SOP to POS problem. There's one POS to SOP, uh, and the POS to SOP is kind of difficult. Um, <clears throat> uh, so give it your best shot, but don't get bogged down and spend a bunch of time on any you know on any one problem. Um, each each actual e even for the SOP to POS, there are questions you could get right and still not get the right answer on the pro for the actual conversion. So you could still get most of the points. Uh, so don't, don't get bogged down. There are, um, there, there's, let's see, there's one, um, two. So there's two state graph problems and there, uh, there's a sequ non-sequential counter problem. There, uh, there is a section of, uh, uh, of a VHDL code uh, that you have to look at and sort of figure out what it is. And, and then there's one, uh, two, uh, two uh, three uh, SM chart problems. And then there's one uh, timing diagram. So, um, so make sure, you know, make sure you pay attention and that you, you know, uh, just kind of work through and get all those done. Um, so you should spend a little time boning up on the SM charts. Um, and I think there's several example problems, uh, on Blackboard. Uh, and I think, I think all of them, I think there's five example, uh, tests and I think they all have answers. Um, the, the non-sequential counter is just a three bit counter. So you can practice a couple of those. That should be a really easy problem for you. And, um, so we can we'll, maybe we'll work one of those in just a few minutes. Um, okay. Um, so yeah. All right. So that's kind of a overview of the test. Um, so let's see. And I think did I get this all done? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. So good. All right. Um, so let me see. Maybe we'll maybe I'll pull up some things here. Um, let's see, uh, okay, I mean, that's in the right thing. So let me do, so get them alphabetically and, okay, so let's do, let's do fall 19. I don't know if I've done that one before. Oh, let's see, I probably have, but anyway. Okay. I think this is, I wonder how that compares. Okay, yeah, yeah, let me do, let me do this one. So I will, I'll print this one. I don't remember if I've done it before, but I'll do it right now. Okay, so here's, so I'll, I'll print out a test and then I'll just work through some of these problems. 
going to be somewhat representative. Let's see if we have anybody else. No, it looks like okay. All right. Um, say that's right all day. But you, you'll once you start the test, you'll have two and a half hours. Okay. So, so I'm going to share my screen and I'll just go through this test. We'll try and cover the stuff you should be pretty familiar with pretty quickly. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll do this. Okay. So, so these, so again, here's one SOP uh, to POS. So here's one POS to SOP. Um, the, the, the first thing to do, of course, is to look at these and see if you can find, if you can use rule 9, 10, or 11 to simplify it. Uh, so in this case, there might even be, uh, there might even be a consensus term, but uh, I don't think that's going to help you one way or the other. Okay, so if you look at this, um, yeah, so, so let's look at this. So the first thing we see is we have BD, AC, and essentially ACD prime. Well, since you have AC. Okay, I found this on the web for an ACD. That's ridiculous. I, I didn't touch that stupid phone. I wonder why it started. All right, so anyway, uh, because you have an AC, this term, which is, I wrote it kind of disguised it, but it's ACD prime. So there's an AC and an AC. So this term's gone. And that just leaves. BD plus AC. All right, so now that's really easy. Uh, you, you have to use the second distributive law a couple of times. You let that as X, this be Y, and this be Z, and you get BD plus A times BD plus C. Now you let this be X and this be YZ, and then you do it again, you let this be X and this be YZ, and now you get uh, B plus A times uh, D plus A times B plus C times uh, professor. B plus C. Yeah. Oh, you can't Can see you, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll slide it around. Yeah. So, so, so again, we get rid of this term and then you're left with BD plus AC. And then you just use the second distributive law once to get BD plus A quantity times BD plus C where X is BD and A is Y and C is Z. E. And then you do it again, where you let A be X and B and D be Y, Z or Z, Y. And that gives you B plus A times quantity D plus A. And then you do it again, letting C be X and B and D be Y and Z. And that gives you B plus C quantity times D plus C quantity. All right, so that's that. And, the, uh, and then here we have one SOP form. So A plus B plus C times A prime plus B plus C times B plus C plus D prime. Well, one of the things you see here, here you have an A and here you have an A prime and a BC and a BC. So you can combine these and just have BC. Now you have a BC here, so that one goes. And basically you're just left with BC, which is, is in uh, both POS and SOP form. So, because it's just a single term. All right. So, um, yeah, all right. So now we have uh, the, we'll look at the don't care part or the look at the, so hopefully by now you guys are very comfortable taking truth tables and entering information. And uh, so let's just look at a couple of things. I'm, I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm just gonna put in some numbers. Uh, so let's do one, one X and one, one, one. Okay, so everybody tends to see this one, but they tend to forget this one. So pay attention to that. Um, yeah, and if you had another one, one, then you'd have another one here. Now, are all those essential or non-essential? Are there any non-essentials there? So how many, first that's three PIs, right? How many are essential? Um, I think all three. 
That's right, all of them. Yeah. Okay, now if you want to, now let's look at the, let's look at, we'll put a, maybe another X in here. So you'd want that X, uh, and, but you, you could use this X here. Those are equivalent, so it doesn't really matter. So you either get this X or you get that X. Um, but now you have four PIs. All right, let's look at the zeros. So now we have zero, 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 X here, X there and zero, zero, zero there. And so in this case, you, you can have this whole column, this whole column, which would be your optimum solution. But you also have this and you have this. So you have four PIs there, but you don't, but in this case, you, um, so, so this is kind of an unusual example because if you take the uh, SOP solution, one of these don't care is you'll, you'll, you will not, you will make a zero. If you take the uh, SOP solution, um, I mean, sorry, the POS solution, <coughs> you'll make both of these don't cares uh, will be, will be ones. So it's a little different because you, you wouldn't, in this solution, you wouldn't use them both as ones, I don't think. Oh, yeah, no, you wouldn't. So that's interesting, but anyway, okay. So so just make sure you you don't you know don't go through this so fast and mess up. Remember the definition of of essential is there's a one that's not covered by any other group. Well, this one's not covered by any other group. This one's not covered by any other group. Um, but this one is covered by this group with here and this group here. So it, this one is covered by two. So now you have two essentials and two non-essentials. And to solve it, you need three PIs, the two essentials plus one of the two non-essentials to get this last one. All right. Um, so just make sure you can look, look at these, um, look at these, uh, this, these, this VHDL code and make sense out of it. That's pretty small. You probably can't even see that. I'll, I'll come back to that and talk about it. But I, one thing, uh, let me work the two SN chart problems. So, so, um, I, I, the, uh, I, I don't think I put any, any, um, I don't think there are any uh, two's complement math problems on the test. So that's good, I guess, or maybe not, depending on your two's complement skills. Okay. And maybe I'll make this bigger so you can see it better. Okay, and make sure if, yeah, I guess everybody's there. Okay. All right, so, so here we have um, one, two, we have three blocks, right? Well, it's three state boxes and three blocks. And I didn't draw the blocks, but this would this would basically this this would be one block here, and uh, this would be another block here, and that would be the third block down there. All right. So, uh, so the first thing you notice we we have strict binary straight binary order zero one two. And there's no three. So. Since we don't have a three, they would if we did state if we did a state graph, state table, flip flop assignment of zero, one, two, three, and then four for don't cares, and then transition table, K maps, we would have don't cares in the K maps, and they, we actually might have K maps that, that had um, that had uh, that where we could take advantage of the don't cares and maybe get a slightly better solution than we will do off of our SM chart because the SM chart doesn't take into consideration. Uh, the don't cares. So that that's maybe a little bit of a downside, but not too bad. Let's focus this just a little bit. Okay. Okay, I think you can all see that okay now, right? All right. So for the SM chart, answer, write all the D input and Z output logic equations. And then here are states, S, S0, S1, S2. So this is A0, zero, zero, uh, A, A prime, B prime. So this is A prime, B prime because it's zero, zero. This is 
a prime b, this is a b prime. So it's good to keep that in mind. All right, so uh, how many state blocks are there? There are three state blocks. Is this mealy, more, or both? It has more outputs and it has mealy outputs, so it's both. How many inputs does this circuit have? Uh, well, it has one input x, that's it, one input. Okay, so let's look at our dA. Uh, so the way you find the, the A, a flip-flop input and the B flip-flop input, and we're using D flip-flops for these problems uh, because that way we don't have to have two inputs for each flip-flop. So we look at where, uh, where all the blocks where A is, the A variable is a one. Well, it's prime here, prime there, it's one there. So, so we're gonna look at all the paths into this, into this block. There's a path that comes from um, A prime B X. So we put that down, A prime B X. And there's a path that comes from A B prime X back around. So plus A B prime X. All right, so we have those two. Um, and yeah, that looks like it. Okay, then we do the B. Well, there's only one node where we have B and that's here. There's only, there's only one path into the B node and that comes from as A prime, B prime, X prime. So B is A prime, B prime, X prime. And there's no other path that comes into that, that block. So you're good. Um, so that's the answer. Now, the ZA, the ZB, and the ZC are simple, but they're just, whenever you're in S0, you're outputting ZA. When it, and ZA then equals one then, but nowhere else. Whenever you're in S1, ZB equals one, but nowhere else. And when you're in S2, ZC equals one, but nowhere else. So that makes it really easy. For all these more outputs, all you have to do is identify the state. In this case, A prime, B prime. Where both flip flops are zero, you're in state S0, you're outputting CA. If you have A prime B, you're doing AB. And if you have A, B prime, you're doing C. Now, Z1, we have to think about just a little bit. In Z1, you're in this, this, this block where A, where it's one zero or A, B prime. And in this case, Z1 is where X prime is. So it's A, B prime. X prime and Z2 is A B prime X because you go out the other leg and through Z2. That's all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, any questions about that? Um, we've been over this a whole bunch of times. Uh, so I'll, I'll maybe do it real quickly. So again, you have, you have your sequence seven, six, one, two, five, and then back to seven. All right, so now we just fell out the truth table. Zero is a don't care because it doesn't appear. In fact, what doesn't appear? Zero doesn't appear. One, two, three doesn't appear. Four doesn't appear. Um, yeah, so, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's all eight values. So zero, three, and four are gonna be don't care. So there's zero, there's three, there's four. Okay, now we go to one. One goes to two, zero, one, zero. Then two goes to five, one, zero, one. Don't care, don't care. Five goes around to seven, one, one, one. Six goes to seven, or six goes to one, rather, zero, zero, one. So six goes to one here. And then seven goes to six, one, one, zero. That's all there is to that. Now you just have to extract these into the A map, these into the B map, and these into the C map. Remember to flip the rows. You have to flip the rows. All right, so that's going to be don't care, zero, one, don't care, don't care, one, uh, zero, one. All right, so then that's going to be something like this, like this, and then you have your choice on this one. You can wrap it around or you can do this. And then, then you just have to be able to read these off the map. So this one is, so the A, so, so this one is A, B prime, 
plus uh, this one, which is uh, BC plus this one, which is A prime, um, and we won't use that one, which is A prime uh, B. So that, that gives you the one, two, three terms, and you've covered all the ones. And then you have another term here uh, that you don't need because all it does is it's looping the, yeah, I guess that was, there was a one there. So that, that makes these two non-essentials. You can pick either one. All right, in here, you have don't care, one, zero, don't care, don't care, one, zero, one. All right, so we get that, and then we get, you can you could do this, or you can do this. You gotta take your pick. So this group here is just B prime. And then this group here is just gonna be BC. And that's it, that's all you need. And then finally, the last one, zero, uh, X, zero. Uh, professor? Yeah. In that map, can it be done like uh, uh, that second one? Oh, yeah, can it be could, the second yeah, yeah, fourth yeah, group? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. And that would be, uh, that would be C, B prime plus C. Yeah, sorry. So even the professor can make a mistake. All right, uh, zero, X, uh, so zero, X, zero, one, X, X, uh, what the hell? Oh, yeah, X, X, one, one, zero. So then you get this and that. Oh, sorry, you can do this with that. So that's gonna be C prime. And this, well, this loop here with this will be C prime and this will be A, B prime. So, so that's going to be C prime plus A B prime. All right. And, you know, since it's, since then you'll get questions asked, you, you, you'll get some help if you, like, let's say you mess up and you don't, you know, you don't do this uh, whole loop, you just do this. And then you'll look and, you, and you'll, you won't see maybe the answer you got. So then you can figure, oh, maybe I had to do that. Or maybe you will see it. In any event, in some cases, I, I, I did more simplification than in other cases. Uh, like, for instance, in this one, um, yeah, there's nothing you can simplify there anyway. I get, it. yeah, so, yeah. All right, does this circuit have an input besides the clock? No, only a clock. Okay, let's do this last one and then we'll see where we are. We'll take a few questions. And let's see, it looks like we have, yeah, it's good. All right, so we'll raise this up a little bit. All right, maybe, maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, so you're to finish a state machine chart for a mealy, uh, for a melee machine with an input X and output Z where Z equals zero except for the target, one, 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 zero is detected. Yeah, all right. So, we're, and then then what happens is, uh, so Z is zero except unless you get this target. No overlapping targets are possible, but you don't reset on, uh, uh, you don't reset on more than three ones since you could still get a target with a zero. Uh, I'm confused. No overlapping targets are possible, but you don't reset on more than three ones since you could get still get a target. Do straight binary, straight binary flip flop say on for each block and fill in. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, there's no overlapping targets because the zero is at the end. So, so no no targets overlap, but you can keep counting ones. Uh, so you don't when you get three ones and you get another one, you would just keep you just, you'd stay there because you can still get a zero to get a target. And uh, so basically that's saying that if you, if you have, um, you know, one, 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 zero, that's still a target right there, but there's no overlap because you didn't have a target before. Does that make sense? All right, well, anyway. Okay, so, so you get, so now you just have to finish it. So the first thing is, uh, do straight binary flip-flop state assignment for each block and fill in the AB. 
showed by the dash lines, finish the SM chart with just connections, then wire, then write DA, DB, and Z equations. Z is assumed zero if the conditionals uh, Assign, if the conditional assignment block's not in the path. So everywhere Z is zero except right here, this one path. All right, so, um, so we said zero, zero, so that's gonna be A prime, B prime, zero, one, so that's gonna be A prime, B, one, zero, so that's gonna be A, B prime, and one, one, that's just gonna be A, B. Now, um, so, if we're looking for one, 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 zero, so our first one, we go here, but if we get a zero, we're just gonna stay here. Okay, here, if we get a one, we're gonna to go to the next one. And if we get a zero, we're gonna go back to the S zero. Here, so that's one, one, so we got a one, we got one, one. Here, if we get a one, now we have three ones, one, one, one. And if we get a zero, we'll go back to here. Now here, if we get a one, we can stay here, but we don't get a target. So we'll go in like that. But if we get, but here, if we get a zero, now we don't have any ones at all. And we have to go back all the way to here. Okay, so, so that's how you connect all the paths really pretty straightforward. Now, if we, uh, if we change things, so if we, so let's write the DA and the DB and the DC. So the DA, here's where A is one and here's where A is one. So we need all the paths into this node, all the paths into this node. This one has one path in and it's A prime B X plus this one has, uh, this one has, uh, two paths in, one comes from here. So that's uh, A, B prime X, and one comes wrap around from here, and that's A, B, X. Now you can, of course, combine these two uh, and, get, uh, and get A, X, and you can combine these two and get B, X if you want to do that. Okay, so now we have DB. Uh, so DB, we, we want B as a one there and B as a one here. So we need all the paths into this node. Well, we already had those. That's AX. So we can actually, but I'll write, I'll write them. So it's A, B prime X plus A, B, X. And then we have to add in the path into this node. And there's only one path in and that's from A prime B prime X. So now these two can combine into B, B prime X. And these two can combine into AX. And then Z, Z is really simple. It's just in this block when X is zero. So that's just gonna be A, B, X prime. Okay. And then let's work this one. So something like this is usually on every test. This one down, this one here. So the sequence detector input X and output Z network outputs an F zero as long as it sees the sequence one zero zero or zero zero zero. So that's really equivalent to don't care zero zero. So here's our don't care. And then this would be a zero, that's a zero. And now we have our output one because it's a more. And the outputs have to be associated with the nodes instead of the links. Here it's associated with the link. Here it's associated with the node. All right, so uh, then if you get here, uh, then if you get a one instead of a zero, you're going back to here and resetting. Here, if you get a one, you're going back to here. And then here, um, here, uh, when you get the next value, whether it's a one or a zero, then you have the next item in the next possible sequence, zero or one, we'll put that there. So either way, X or X, zero or one, you're going to S1, zero here, zero here. We consider this target and reset here, 
zero, one, we're back to there. And then if you get a one back, one back, and that's it. And then you just transfer that information into the table. And the meaning is obviously S0, you have nothing. S1, you have the first item. S2, you have first and second. And S3 is target, but it's also in reset because you're ready to start over after you get that target. If you go up here, you throw away that next value. So you've wasted an input and you didn't even evaluate it. You just threw it away, which you, you know, might be what they wanted, but in this case, not. Okay, I, I think, let me do one more. And then I think I'm gonna take a little, we'll, we'll let you ask questions. So this is, this is, this is the, uh, this is a, a problem. All right, so first off, for the, for the JK flip-flop picture, write in the tracing for Q in the timing diagram. Assume that the time for the output to change after the active edge of the clock or the assertion is set is five nanoseconds, but every division is five nanoseconds. So you have to add a division. So, so we'll mark those. Assume setup and hold times can be ignored. Note that the flip-flop has an asynchronous set and you should mark where it is active, all right? Somebody tell me, is the set active when it's zero or is the set active when it's one? In this case. One. That's right. One because there's no bubble. So now we're going to mark it here where it's one. And then what do we have? A rising edge or a falling edge clock? A rising edge. Okay. So, so we mark active edges, but we know the edges here are not going to have an effect because they're going to be blocked by the set. So now we have an active edge here, an active edge here, an active edge here, and an active edge here. Now, we also have to remember about JK. So we have we have Q. Uh, we, well, sorry, we have um, yeah, we have Q and Q plus. Okay, so zero zero zero. Uh, oh, actually, for this one, we we just need to remember the best way to think about this one is I'll, I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll finish this since I started it. Q and Q plus, and then we have J and K. Okay, professor. Yeah. Can you uh, lower the page a little? We cannot see the Q and Q plus table. Yeah, yeah, got it. All right. Thank you. So, so if we stay at zero, or we go, we go to one, or we go from one to zero, or we stay at one. So in the case of zero, zero, our J has to be zero and our K is a don't care. In the case of zero to one, our J has to be one and our K is a don't care. In the case of one, zero, our J has to be, uh, a don't care and our K has to be a one. In the case of staying at one, our K has to be zero and our J is a don't care. No, that's wrong. Oh, uh, no, uh, no, this is one and this is a don't care. Yeah, something like that. I don't know, I think it's screwed up. Let's see, uh, well, anyway, but this is when you're designing with JK. Uh, I think, uh, so, okay, let me just think. Uh, if 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 k is if k is zero, then it can't be reset. And j is a don't care. Here, if j is a zero, so this should be so this is if k is zero, j is a don't care. And if in here, if j is if k is if K is a one, then J is a don't care. Here, if we're going from zero to one, J has to be one, K is a don't care. And if they're both zero, J has to be zero and K is a don't care. Right, okay, so, so, so then the final thing is zero X, one X, X one and X zero. All right, but, but this is not what you need. This is if you're designing with the JK. Okay, for, for solving this problem, all you have to remember is J and K. If they're both zero, it's hold. If J is one and K is zero, it's, well, we should do it the other way, zero and one, then it clears. If it's one and zero, it sets. And if they're both one, it toggles. So this is what you need to remember to solve this problem. 
and this is what you need to this is what you need to remember if you're designing with the JK flip flop. Okay, so in this case, then we just write in what J and K are. In this case, J is a one at this active edge, and K is a zero. Here it's blocked, but we know that this is going to set, but it's not going to take effect to here. So we know we can just go ahead and write in. It's it's gonna it's definitely going to be up here, and it's going to stay up until it gets here and actually to there. Now at this point, uh, since J is one, it's gonna set right off the bat. And then, so it's just gonna stay up the whole way here. Stay up and then here, and it actually won't go up though for five nanoseconds. So you can put this little step in here. And so there's a little five nanosecond delay. And then here, this active edge, J is one and K is one, so it's gonna to toggle. So five nanoseconds later, it's gonna to go to zero. Here we have J is one and K is zero. So now it's gonna set. And here they're both one, so it's gonna to toggle again, again, five nanoseconds after the clock edge. So that's what you get. Okay. So let me stop with that and uh, see if you guys have any questions. That should give you a pretty good, you know, if you can, if you understand that and you can do those things, you'll be in pretty good shape. Uh, oh, oh, Carol will be on 15 minutes. Okay, so that's my wife's note. <laughs> All right. Okay, any questions? I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, yes, Professor, can you go back to the uh, problem that you just had? Okay. Uh, I was wondering, why are we setting that at the five nanosecond mark instead of the 15 nanosecond mark, since the uh, rising age doesn't happen until the 10 nanosecond mark? No, no, it, I, I, I was indicating five nanosecond delay, not the five nanosecond mark. So, oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it should. That's correct. It should set right there. That's right. Should be just like that. I don't know. I was. I don't know what I was oh, oh, okay. But yeah, it's right. You're you're correct. I was a little confused on that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just have to work these carefully. And of course, I was being you know kind of fast here. And we have a, a one and a one here. I should mark that too. Okay. They're pretty straightforward, but you know that there's no room for no room for error. <laughs> okay. Other questions. All right. So you'll have all day to do the test. Uh, I'll send out another email just to make sure everybody's got the got the memo. Um, so if anybody asks you, make sure you let them know. They have from 8 a.m. until one minute before midnight to take the test, to start the test. And then they have two and a half hours to finish it. I originally said uh, two hours, but it's it, but I'm giving you two and a half hours. I'm sure this question will pop up. Um, so um, if you take it, you since it's two hours and a half, the latest you can take it, I guess it would be like uh, no, you can start it. No, you can start at 11 59. Perfect, thank you. I, I probably won't do that, but I just wanted to check on the answer. Yeah, thank you. As long as you start the test, you'll be able to finish it. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. So as long as both, as long as Blackboard operates that way. All right. Okay. I'm going to ring off because I have to go to lunch. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you, sir. Uh-huh. Bye.